Hi everyone, my name's Larry. You may know me better as Mr. Button. I think I've seen all of you at the Ridgemont Montessori School in Mrs. Button's class, or at the picnics on the parking lot, or at some of the parties at some of your houses. I want to tell you about a story written by a friend of mine named Ramaz. It's called Apple Seeds. And it was copyrighted by Zip Zap Conglomerations Limited. So here it is, Apple Seeds. The other day, Ms. Button went to Ridgemont. She walked down the silent steps to her classroom to gather some materials to give to families and students. She missed the sounds of laughter and singing, the many colors, the smells of baking. She used a map to drive to their houses, one by one. Sometimes she knew she was at the right house when she saw the family's car outside. She stopped to leave the materials outside. Students and parents came to their windows and doors, smiling, waving, and saying hello. They laughed and jumped. They waved and clapped. They showed off their Spider-Man outfit. That's some outfit. They climbed beautiful cherry trees covered with blooms that fell like snow on the ground. They delivered notes and told stories Ms. Button learned that one family played a nine-inning baseball game that ended with a score of 80 to 78, a world record. Her trip from house to house reminded me of the story of Johnny Appleseed. Have you ever heard of him? He was the man who walked across the country planting apple trees as he went. You think I look a little like him? His real name was John Chapman. He was born nearly 250 years ago when America was born during the American Revolutionary War. His father fought at the Battle of Bunker Hill in Massachusetts. He planted his first apple tree in 1798 in Pennsylvania, and from there he started walking west, into the frontier. During the day he would walk for miles and miles, over mountains, along rivers, Across fields, he walked through cold rain and snow. He walked under the hot sun. He walked through the wilderness, unafraid of bears, rattlesnakes, wolves, or wild boars. He respected all animals and did not eat meat. He wouldn't even swat a mosquito. His shirt was a coffee bean sack with holes cut for his arms and his head. Over his legs, he wore loose pantaloons. Often he walked and worked with no shoes.
Most nights, he would sleep outside, gazing up at the stars, little twinkling seeds in the sky. And every day, on his back, he carried a heavy sack of apple seeds. As he passed hills and valleys, he looked for spots where pioneers and families might settle and live. And there he would plant more seeds. For 50 years, Johnny Appleseed lived outdoors. With each step, he learned more and more about the land and the world we live in. And in the path that he laid, from Pennsylvania to Ohio, from Indiana to Illinois and Iowa, he left acre upon acre of apple orchards. Can you find those states? One of his trees is still standing. It's almost 180 years old. You can visit it in Nova, Ohio. You know, teachers are a little like Johnny Appleseed. Their class is like an orchard full of young students they care for and help their students to grow and learn and be strong so that one day they will do things to help others. Even when they are parted by space or time, they are embraced in tight and happy hugs from their teachers. At the last stop on her trip, Ms. Button was given a special gift by a family. It was a small apple tree seedling grown from a simple apple seed. Over the past few weeks, Mrs. Human, Mrs. Shooty, Luce, Mrs. Bimaraju, Mrs. Molina, and Ms. Button have been working on how to best stay close to you and your families. They are just a few of the many, many thousands of teachers across the world reading, adding, singing, painting, exploring, sharing, and joining with their students to learn, smile, be together, and love in new ways. There's your friends. So that's the story, Apple Seeds by Ramaz, copyrighted by Zip Zap Conglomerations. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. Bye.